Hi, this is Jerry Butat with App Dataworks LLC. Today I'm going to show you how to uh, create uh, an alias on your machine so that you can reference another machine on your network by a different NetBIOS name. Uh, this uh, circumvents the need to have to create any kind of C name or DNS records uh, to do this. In all likelihood, you'll, you'll only need to really do this if you're in a development environment where you have to uh, write software. Um, Maybe you have database-driven software that's going to pluck a network location out of a database field, and you need that to be able to work, uh, with, you know, in your client's environment after the deployment. Um, or you're going to be referencing a SQL server. Uh, maybe you um, you are uh, referencing the server programmatically, um, and you you want it to work when you deploy it to your client. So that won't work if you have uh, a server like I have called ADWLX68100101. Uh, that, that particular server um, is not in my client's servers. All right, it's not um, a name that I could use in any of my software. I, I can't store a network path in a database using that. Uh, I can't uh, create a connection to a SQL, SQL server using that. Um, a lot of my software will, software will dynamically uh, connect to SQL servers based on values that it finds in a database. So how do I get around that in my development environment? Well, um, creating an alias will allow you to do that. So let's look at, let's actually go and see what the IP address is for my, my uh, other machine now, okay? So we'll ping ADWLX68101. Oh. And I'm going to get the, the IPv6 uh, addresses. Let me try that again. Let me ping ADWLX6810-0101 with the uh, IPv4 switch. So I can see that's 192.168.1.146. Okay. So um, if I try to ping any of the um, server names that, that would, say, exist on a client's machine um, environment, like... SQL server that's going to come back saying it can't find it. How about a file server? Oh, ping file server. And it's going to come back saying that it can't find it. Okay, so what, what do we want to do? We want to make sure that I can use that server machine for two purposes. One, it needs to, to mimic uh, the SQL server and the other it needs to mimic the file server. So let's bring up our our command window here. I'm sorry. Let's bring up our um, our host file. So in the in the in the folder C Windows System 32 Drivers etc. There is a file called Hosts. And if we open that up using Notepad, you'll see basically this is the default way that Hosts will always look until you change it. In our case. We want to get 192.168.1.146 to respond to the name SQL Server. We also want it to respond to the name File Server. Okay? So we save that, and now if we come back here, and we say ping it, ping SQL server, we're now it's coming back with this, the same IP address as the original ADW LX 68100101. Now, these, these don't necessarily have to be the same IP address. You might have two different servers in your organization. One might be a SQL server. The other one might be a file server. You might have everything on one laptop and, and still need to be able to do this. And, and that's a, uh, an, a video for another day. But for right now, let's just work with this one machine. We need to see it as two different machines in our software. Um, so we're going to set it up so that your machine can work with that. And that's what I just did. So let's go and ping the file server now. And a, a, we see that we are still getting this. Now, 
I happen to know that on the server, ADWLX6810101, there is a share called Jerry, in which I can access. Okay. And now that I have aliased that machine with the two different alias names, I can access that Jerry's share using either name. I can use uh, SQL server, or I can use file server. So there you have it. I have just created a alias on my machine that can see that one machine, ADW LX 6810-0101 as if it's three different machines. How powerful is that? Now you can write your software, create um, resource files or uh, database tables, uh, XML files that contain the proper names for your client's environment. And that's all I have for this video today. And uh, the next video I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to allow the target machine to actually be seen as an alias name using a registry tweak that you may or may not have to do depending on the machine itself. Some machines are locked down and, and won't allow, the machine won't allow itself to be seen as any other name. But that's a video for another day. This is Jerry Buta at DataWorks LLC signing off.